Namaste beautiful yogis. I designed Interval Yoga as a holistic system for mind, body and heart that combines ancient spiritual yoga teachings with high intensity interval training that will get you in the best shape of your life. I have thousands of testimonies from people that have done and followed my classes for years. Come on to my website and read through them. They're extremely inspiring. On my membership, I have 400 classes and right now I'm adding a three month beginner program that can get you into the more advanced classes. I'm also a brand new mom, so I'm offering a lot of tools for new moms, how they can lose weight, get back in shape, feel positive. My membership is the best offer out there on the internet because it offers you classes for every occasion. So come on over to my website, sign up for my membership, and I'll see you on the mat. Namaste. Namaste, my name is Ali Kamenova and today we are doing yoga fusion workout for swimmers. We will be working on posture, muscle balancing and stretching, strengthening. Starting at the front of the mat, the first and most important thing is to pay attention to your posture and become aware of your posture in throughout your day. So standing at the front of your mat, spread your toes open, lifting the toes off the floor, spread them, which activates the four corners of each foot, which sets you up for a proper posture all the way up on the chain. From here, dropping the toes down, pull the belly in, feel the strength of your legs, inner thighs, glutes, legs, quadriceps, everything is engaging, front of legs, back of legs, the inner thighs, everything is engaging, not over tensing, just feeling the muscles with a relaxed air to it. You, you stand relaxed yet strong, fluid yet strong, something that most swimmers understand. There is this fluidity in the movement yet strength. So that's how we want to be also when we're working on our posture. Without overdoing it, we want to feel the strength and then slowly bring the shoulders back and down and even exaggerate it where the chest is open and the back is wide. And again, open, open. Chin parallel to the floor and feel as if someone has attached a string to the top of your head and pulling you up, 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 up. So there is length, openness, Taking a nice deep breath and feeling the lower belly. Breathing into the belly, you can bring your hands over uh, the belly, inhale into your hands. Exhale, a few more of those. Great. Let's open the chest again, shoulders back, dropping the shoulder blades down. Inhale your arms out, parallel to the floor at 90 degree angle and we're going to extend as if it we're extending the elbows, elbows away from us and pressing the arms back. Now you can lower them, lift them back up, lower lift them back up, lower, lift them back up, extend out, turn the palms of the hands down, extend out, down, out, down, out, down, bring in some movement in the wrists, so we're now warming up the wrists and all the joints actually, in the arms, great, from here, we're going to sit back in chair, so pushing the booty back, extending the tailbone down. So instead of tipping the booty up, extending the tailbone down, which engages your core. And swimming is all about the core. Reaching over the head and try to maintain here. If you can keep your body lifted in chair and when you look down, you can see your toes. 
which means you're pushing back. This means your core is strong. So if it's not there, work on it. Stay a little higher. You can see your toes and you can tuck the tailbone slightly. You can go a little deeper over time. So come back to this class and keep working on this. This is not a one-time thing, it's a continuous process. Great. Exhale, forward fold. Keep your knees bent. Shake your head, relaxing the head and face muscles. Letting go of tension here. Let's wrap the wrist around the elbows, upper body hanging. And you can swing side to side, left to right. Allow the spine to decompress. And for the body to find alignment in the areas where there is one-sided compression. Great, hands on the ground, spread the fingers wide open and step into plank. Plank is your friend because it strengthens your legs, your upper body and your core. Press the heels away from you, the shoulders are over the wrists, the belly is pulling in, core is engaged. From here, bend the knees and we're going to walk forward three steps and walk back three steps forward three steps and back engaging all the muscles here a few more crawls great from here we're gonna come back to plank knees on the ground and we're going to lower forward, elbows remain over the wrists, chaturanga, so strong arms, great, lower all the way on the ground, elbows squeezing into your ribcage, really squeeze, lengthen through the crown of the head, lift the chest off the floor, from here we're going to lift the hands off the floor, bring them behind us and clasp Yes, lengthen the back of your neck and lift your legs off the floor. Opening the chest here, stretching the chest, massaging the belly, lifting the legs, engaging the back of the legs here, working on the muscles, we're stretching and strengthening at the same time. Lift a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. Bend your knees and grab your ankles and lift here. If you cannot do this, you can grab a strap or stay with the previous pose of lifting the legs. Work at your level. Great. Release hands underneath the chest and the toes under. Press back in downward facing dog. Here in downward facing dog, you want to spread the fingers wide open. You want to have your feet hip width apart. And the way to check your down dog is come on to all fours. Wrist underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Take your toes under. And when you strengthen your legs, you pretty much are in your perfect down dog where your alignment is best. From here, we're going to come onto the tippy toes, bend the knees and slowly lower the heels down. Keep the knees bent, the elbows straight without locking. From here, begin to straighten the legs as far as your hamstrings allow without changing the form here. So you may be way bent and it will get much better over time. Stay with it. Great, from here, take the right leg up, step it between the hands, press the back heel away from you, right knee over the right ankle, and come up. High lunge, reaching over the head. Now, paying attention to your posture, neck parallel to the floor, chest open, expansion. Great, hands behind you, interlacing, and open the chest, look up. Mm. Stretch should feel good. From here, paying attention to the tailbone, extending the tailbone down. So
so that you're stretching the quadriceps here. Great. Right elbow tucks by the right ear, left elbow, right by the left rib cage. And see how far you can reach here if you can, if your arms can touch, hands can touch. If not, just touch your t-shirt. Hold here for a moment. Great. Shake your hands. Lower down. Drop the back knee on the ground. Walk the back knee back. Take the tailbone under and stretch your hands on the inside of the right foot, stretching the quadriceps. It will be very helpful to your swimming, to your daily life if you include this stretch. Breathe. Great. Lifting up, step back in your favorite pose, plank. <laughs> plank should be really your most favorite pose because it's your ultimate strength building pose. Great. Remember Chaturanga from the knees. Either do it from the knees or do it now from your feet. Wherever you're at. If you can't do it from the feet, give it a few months. Lower down. And now lifting up maybe in upper dog. Or you can do cobra one more time. Shoulders back and down. Great. And back and down dog. Spread the fingers wide open, lifting the tailbone as high as you can. You can keep the knees bent if you need to. Over time, your hamstrings will open up. Pressing the tailbone as high as you can, you will feel this strengthening, stretching, widening the back and the chest and the posture, the spine. Take the left leg up, step it through, press the back heel away from you, come up, high lunge, bring the hands behind you, interlacing. If you tend to interlace your fingers with the left index on top, now switch it up. So we're going with the less dominant clasp, with the one that feels a little funky, so that we're working on both. Press the hands away from you, soften the shoulders, look up, open the chest, pressing the back heel away from you and the tailbone extends down. Great. Let's reach with the left arm up, right by your rib cage. You can look up here if you're clasping. Good. If you're not, also good. Just touch your t-shirt and allow the muscles to stretch. And breathe. Great. Shake it out. And let's lower the hands down. Bring them on the inside of the left foot. Lower the back knee down. Walk it away from you and hold here for a moment. Stretching the hip flexors on the right side, on the right, in the right hip area leg, groin area. Stretching the hip flexors is really important for preventing injuries and for improving your posture. Most people's hip flexors are somewhat tight and we need to find some flexibility in that area so our posture is proper. Alright, coming out of this, step it back, plank, spread the fingers wide open, take a nice plank. From here we're going to shift the weight onto the right hand, reach over side plank, left arm reaches up, back to plank, opposite side, back to plank, back to plank, Shifting side, switching sides, one more on each side, one, two, and from here walk your feet to the front, exhale, forward fold. Breathing, chair pose. 
Shifting the weight onto the right leg, take your left leg as far back as you can, a really big step, so that your right knee is over the right ankle, and we're gonna reach over the head, left hand on the floor, right arm reaches up, twist. Here you can bring your right hip in towards the midline and feel the twist happening through the spine, stretching in the hips. Essential to good posture. Reaching ahead of you, right arm reaches up and over the head, palm of the hand down, press the back heel away from you, length from the fingertips to your heel. Great. Look down, hands on the ground, strong core, come up to standing and we're going to come up to the front of the mat on one leg. Great. From here, straight back and we're going to touch the floor and come up. This is a form of a deadlift, one-legged deadlift, which will allow you to build the posterior chain. One more time. One more time. That's three. Straight back. The curve in the lower back. Four. Five. Chair. And a few circles here, opening the chest. Opening the chest. Good. Shift onto the other side. Left foot, spread the toes open. You want to learn the footwork, very important in everything, not just in yoga. Take the biggest step back you can and work on this. Over time, you're stretching the hip flexors, the quadriceps, the hamstrings, you'll be able to take a really wide lunge. Pressing the back heel away from you. Let's reach with the right hand forward, lower down, twist. Keep the back heel up towards the ceiling, so don't let it drop to the side. Align it if you can. And breathe into the areas of the body that feel that they're stretching. Stick with it and breathe. All right, you can reach over the head here, palm of the hand facing down. Feel that length from the fingertips all the way into the heel. Great, lower down, and from here we're gonna power up the core, come up, and we're gonna come up onto the left leg, standing to the front, five touches on the ground, straight back, one. That works on your balance, and works on your two. Strength, three. Four. I want you to have really, really open chest when you lower down. Great. All right. Step it down. And we're gonna take a little wider stance about feet are pretty much where the end of the mat is. A little wider than hip width apart. Toes are pointing slightly out and you're gonna begin to squat down. This after plank, this should be your second favorite pose because is that important? We're opening and stretching here the hips, the inner thighs. Releasing the lower back, opening the chest. Hands in prayer and use your elbows to press your legs out here. Keep the chest really open. Now if you notice that you cannot put your heels down, just stand on your toes and work on it. Over time they will lower some, maybe a lot. We have to work on all the joints so that they're supple and flexible, which prevents from injuries and keeps them strong. And it allows us to do more things with better posture. All right. From here, hands on the ground, plank. Take your hands out in a push-up position. This time elbows will be pointing slightly out, fingertips slightly in, and you're gonna take one push-up, two. If you need to be on the knees, do them from the knees. Three, and come back into plank. So that we're involving the chest here, 
as we involve a lot of, in a lot of the swimming styles, we use a lot of the back muscles. Great. From here, take the right leg off the floor, stay in plank and bring the knee to your elbow, to your right elbow, five times. One, two, three, four, five. That's for core and obliques, opposite side. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Lower down onto your belly, lift the legs and the hands off the floor, hold here, great, exhale child's pose, you're going to sit back onto your heels, for the next pose coming up you're going to need a wall, and you're going to come back to a wall and sit all the way, booty to the wall, shoulders to the wall, back of the head to the wall. So you want to feel the wall at your hips level, at your shoulder level and head level, five points of contact. Pressing back into the wall, shoulders are pressing back and the head, lengthening the neck. Let's bring the arms out, bending at 90 degrees at the elbows. Press your elbows back. You can lower here, arms, the forearms, and bring them back up. Lower, and bring them back up. Lower, and bring them back up. Shake it out, come off of the wall. You can lift your head and massage the front of the neck muscles and let's go back one more time this time we're going to bring the hands right by the hips press the shoulders back into the wall which opens the chest hold this posture this is um, this may look like i'm not doing much may look very easy but it is not easy at all because to sit properly, it's one of the hardest poses for us to maintain balance and postural integrity. It takes a lot of muscle work because oftentimes we're crooked and we're imbalanced and we have one side a little stronger than the other and one hip a little higher or one shoulder a little lower. So for us to find symmetry in a pose, it takes work. Oftentimes the chest is collapsed or the neck is not aligned properly and we are seeing all of that when we work on this pose. We feel it within the body. All right, coming out of this, we're gonna lay down on the mat. So to lay down, round your back and just slowly lower down. Right knee into the chest, circle it a few times, take your left hand to the right knee and bring it across from the body. At the same time, I want you to keep the right shoulder down on the ground and you will feel the stretch all through your body, all through your swimming muscles. Looking away from your knee. Okay, coming out. Opposite knee, circle it. And let's bring the right hand to the left knee and across. Look away from your knee, keep the left shoulder down. So the knee may not touch the floor, but the shoulder should stay on the floor. Eventually, for a lot of you, it, both of them will be on the floor once you find a lot of twist through the spine and the torso, even some stretch in the hips. Great, coming out of this. So, so the feet together, allowing the knees to open in butterfly pose, which again stretches the inner thighs, opens the hips. 
Great, from here we are going to bring the right foot into the left hand, lower the left leg down, flex the right foot and bring the foot in towards you without pulling really hard, just gently bring the foot in and the knee away from you. Stretch the abductors, the hips, opposite side. And we're ready to stretch the chest one more time. Press your elbows down, palms of the, face, of the hands facing each other. Feet parallel to each other. Even lift your toes off the floor, activating the four corners of each foot. From here you're going to lift, lift the body of the floor. Chest, the chest is working towards the chin. Lift up and try not to open the knees out. Try to keep everything aligned here. Knees are hip width aligned. And we're stretching the entire anterior side of the body, the anterior chain. Great. Release down. From here, knees into the chest, hands behind the knees. Rock a few times to massage the back muscles. Great. Come up all the way to sit it. And we're going to spread the legs wide open. Flex the feet, pulling the toes in towards you. Walk your hands in front of you, stretching here. Chest open. So keeping the chest open. In the back, elongate it. Great. Side to side reaches. Reaching a few times to stretch the torso. Last one. And you can cross your legs. Close the eyes for a moment. And regardless of if you're a competitive swimmer, career swimmer, or if you do it for pleasure, you can envision the results that you anticipate or you desire. You can envision them, just taking a moment to visualize something that you want to achieve. Visualize it achieved. Visualize where you're going, what you're achieving. And hold this vision for a few moments, quietly creating a space of quiet meditation, awareness. And I'll see you soon. Namaste.